Fred from Radio, I'm David Martos. This is the 67th edition of San Sebastian Film Festival and we're here with um, Teresa Coco and uh, Sarah Gavron, director and writer of Rocks, filming competition here in San Sebastian. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you for having us, it's a great city. Thanks for having us. <laughs> sipping tea, sipping coffee and talking about the film. Um, I mean, the life in this film is is really um, shocking. It's 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 so alive. The story, the girls. Um, why this story? Why did you want to tell this story about these girls in in Britain? This I would say this so modern story. Well, we began with the idea of building a film with young people, um, young girls specifically, because we don't see enough of them on our screens, and we all grew up in London, and it was a story we wanted to tell. But we formed a team first and worked in a collaborative way with the young people themselves, finding our cast. And then it was Teresa who came up with the storyline that you see on screen. So I'll hand over to her to explain that. Okay, Teresa. Um, so, yeah, so like Sarah said, we'd probably had all been together for around nine months to a year before we even started really thinking about the script. So by the time it came to the script we had a script and it wasn't really quite working we felt like it didn't really capture what we were experiencing in the room and you know both in the creative room and in the workshops room so we just felt like there was something missing that didn't really quite honor what was happening um and i had been working on something separate that i described as a love letter to my sister and then i shared it with claire wilson my co-writer because it felt so much that what was happening in the room was sisterhood it was this thing that i that I had put forward as a love letter to one woman now suddenly became it extended to all the sisters that I had made in the process and the sisterhoods that I saw amongst the young women and amongst the creative team and it felt it really felt like the perfect story to to begin really because I, I think what we had was the seed of the story and what grew out of it was so much more than what I had conceived. What about the dialogues? They, they seem so real. I mean, how much of them are improvised and, and how much is, is, I mean, it's scripted? Well, so Teresa and Claire had written the scenes and they'd written um, the sort of flavour of the dialogue. And so we had a shape to it and we had I, we knew what they should say. But then the, we wanted the girls to own it. And, and also, because they were first-time actors, um, it, we were keen that they didn't learn the lines precisely so that we could look at them as they found the thought. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it was about keeping their performances live and real and letting them own those moments and those thoughts by just... Um, sort of flashing it in front of them and then they made it their own in the scenes. But we had a very, very strong base for that. So we knew the direction and that helped, yeah. And the casting, um, um, how was the process to find these first-time actors and, and what, did, what, what were you looking for? So we really had this very open brief. Uh, you know, usually you work with a casting director and you've got a very specific character written, but we just wanted to find a group of girls um, who wanted to come on the journey with us, who had personalities, who had um, lots of energy and talent, um, and who hadn't necessarily acted before. So Lucy Pardy, who's a very experienced casting director who works in this way and has worked with Andrew Arnold and done a lot of street casting, spent a long time with her colleague Jessica Straker going into school meeting young people and um, workshopping with them then we all workshopped together um, and through that we found the group you see on screen and it was really Teresa's connection with Bookie who plays rocks that led us to well one her bringing generously her own storyline into it from that she'd been developing but also us focusing on Bookie as our lead I'm pretty sure you've seen the film with the girls how was the reaction? I mean, I can imagine that, that group. Um, I think, so when they watched it initially with the first time with the girls, I couldn't bring myself to watch it, so I left because I just felt so much, I just wanted so much for them to love it and for their, their families were there as well, so for their families to love it because it felt like the whole process, like I said, was really this to honor the post or to honor the friendships the trust the love that had formed between them and us and each other um so i left and then i called claire wilson my co-writer after and i was like do they like it she said they loved it and i came back and what i came back to was you know just a celebration of themselves and and of th their family being proud of each other taking the mickey out of each other 
you know, it, it was like almost like the last day of school and that it felt like, OK, we really did something great here. All of us together, we've made we've given these girls this amazing thing that we get to share with they've given and they've given to us this amazing thing that we get to share forever. So, yeah, it was brilliant. It's been brilliant watching them experience this. The, the Britain you depict in the film is somehow broken, I would say. It's a society that, that, that there's a tremendous gap between poor people and rich people and, and, and classes, right? Um, how do you feel? Uh, how's, how's the country right now? How would you describe the situation? Well, you know, as you say, we're at really difficult times and particularly for young people, and Theresa knows much more about this than I do because she works with young people, um, youth provisions are being taken away and all the structures that, you know, there was a period um, 10 or 20 years ago where you had many more youth clubs and many more resources and now all that's disappearing. But despite that, you know, you have this huge potential in these young people and they're resilient and they're capable and they're able to navigate their way through the world. So we wanted to kind of capture both both those. And now you're here competing for the Golden Seashell, which is a big award here. How does it feel? Um, exciting and um, really, yeah, really proud that um, that showcasing young people from London, from parts of London that aren't always celebrated, that is often depicted as hopeless and full of despair. Just really proud that the idea of, you know, of these parts of our, of our community that, that where I grew up and where my friends and family are from can be seen on a world stage and can bring joy and, you know, and laughter and hope to people so far from them feels, yeah, we're really proud that this film is, you know, being received so well by San Sebastian because of what it represents. Okay, Sarah Gavron, Teresa Koku, writer and director of the film of Rocks, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm David Martos. This was an interview for Fred, the Festival Insider.